Hello everyone and welcome to Tabor Talk. I'm your host, Michael Tabor. So trying this new um, technology that I'm using, uh, um, we all know that Jorge Masvidal is the biggest star in UFC uh, today. So I'm going to show you three clips uh, that I grabbed from YouTube. The first one is Jorge Masvidal in a street fight. Get in on him, Ray. Knock him out. Pretty intense, right? Okay, so here is um, the knockout Ben Askren. Hurry Masvidal knocking out Ben Askren in five, Askren in five seconds. Masvidal. All right, now for the introductions back inside the first bucket. Personal record, 19 wins, no losses, one no contest. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Finally, out of Heartland, Wisconsin, presenting the number five ranked welterweight contender in the world, Ben Bucky Ashcraft. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a boxer, only a professional record, 33 wins, 13 losses. He stands. Five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, presenting the number four ranked welterweight contender in the world, Jorge Gabriel Mosby-Ball. And the action begins, our referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog back in there for this one. Ariane Celeste is here. Brittany Palmer, Brooklyn Wren also on hand. Gamebred is in the building. 
And these guys just flapping gums at each other. Any chance they get. The fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Oh! statement and he has just turned in the fastest knockout in ufc history what is that three seconds five, five seconds, seconds. Wow. the official time oh, sorry dwayne ludwig he got you and it'll be interesting when you talk to masvidal in terms of how much they talked about opening that way just like that masvidal takes oh, ben Askren's own. ben is waking up he doesn't know what happened yet He's trying to get back up, and they're trying to keep him down. He's still, still out. Let's take a look at it. This fight replay is brought to you by Nemiroff, bold character since 1872. Fight. Here it is in real time. My goodness. My goodness. So the fastest knockout in UFC history. You know, he was out immediately. This, yeah. All this is academic. He, he could have just, they could have stopped it at two seconds. Incredible, right? Okay. <laughs> Here's the press conference. Okay, enjoy. Well, fastest knockout in UFC history and uh, clearly a fight that was very personal to you. So uh, along, <laughs> yeah. along the way, uh, you've had some great wins. Where, where does this one rank all time out of, of all your accomplishments? wasn't personal, man. I just don't like the dude. I knew how to get inside his head, and uh, that's it, man. You know, there's nothing personal for me. It's just business. I'm here to get these checks, get paid, and uh, make sure that I, got, I put enough money away for my kids to go to university so that belts was next. And um, I'm glad I got to end that dude, man. You started with flying knees before. I mean, was there a decision that, you know, you thought you could knock him out with it, or is that just the way you wanted to start the fight? I mean, why was that the... The initial move. Uh, he's so predictable, man. He's, he's a scrub. But a part of me just wanted to throw it out there so he knew, like, if you do shoot like an idiot, like you only know how to, your head's going to get clipped, and that would put the brakes on him, and then I'd beat him up for 14 minutes and 30 seconds and execute him. Or, you know, he took the bait. You know, I put my hands behind my back. He probably thought we were going to fucking patty kick it up or something. I don't know. But he walked right into it, you know? I saw some criticism. People say the punches weren't really necessary. Maybe they were super necessary. <laughs> why were they necessary? What do you mean, why were they not necessary? Because he was already knocked out at that point. But it, the referee hadn't pulled me off. And my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off. So to those people, I would say maybe don't watch him and may go back to soccer. I saw some other criticisms, perhaps, of your celebration afterwards. Any regrets at the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? Uh, man, there's not too many people that I've disliked. I have over 50 pro fights, and he's one of them, you know. He talked about my manhood, talked about my culture, my ethnicity. Where, where do we draw? Why do certain people get to do stuff You online? So you could do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want, like other fighters are not doing, talking about people's religions, wife, even kids. That's cool. But after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face so you and guys like you could see it and be like maybe i don't talk so much shit because when i cross one of these real motherfuckers they're gonna make me pay for it man they're gonna embarrass the shit out of me and it's not over for ben either he still has to deal with me if i see him at whole foods i'm gonna still slap that dude up because i don't like him and last thing for me i know after the last fight you thought you know i'm gonna get the title shot you didn't you took this one why now do you believe the title shot will be yours it should have been mine like you said but uh you know I don't know. I'm not going to sell my soul, man. I know uh, they go around sometimes, you know, telling, oh, you got the title shot of you and then see who get, gives them the best deal. I want to get paid for my services. I, I think I bring a very real thing to this uh, fighting thing, and that's just baptizing people. I'm not God, but I'm, I'm putting motherfuckers in another planet when I'm done with them. Or, hey, on Thursday, you told the schmo, I'm right over here, you had the head buster the rib cage destroyer, and the kneecap defibrillator. Is it safe to say you gave Ben Askren the head buster? He got the head buster with the 
no longer with us clavicle he got a, he got all types of shit then he got those uh punches to the face you know because i i thought he was gonna get up <laughs> you said you want a title shot next how soon do you want to get in the octagon with kamaru usman it could be tomorrow I'm ready. I, as you see, I didn't. I know they said I was in a fight. The rumors are saying that I was in a fight, but I wasn't. A fight is usually longer than five seconds, so I wasn't in a fight. No injuries. I'm ready to go tomorrow. Lastly, for me, did that go exactly how you expected it to go? Yes and no. My my whole vision of this, if you if you could get inside my head and replay my thoughts, were me beating his ass for 14 minutes and then putting him out like that. I really wanted to hurt him for as long as I could, as much as I could destroy his kneecaps, bust his ribs, make him piss blood, and then send him home packing. But, you know, he got, I think in a way he got off easy. Jorge in front, uh, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Did you uh, see anything from what Robbie Lawler did in that fight that led you to feel like he would be vulnerable to that move tonight? It, not just the Robbie Lawler fight, his whole career. He's, he's always like, his face is a magnet to crotches. And if you want to try to touch my crotch and you're a dude, there's a heavy toll to pay, man. This is a heavy toll. This crotch ain't for dudes. And where did you uh, get the dislike for him in the first place? Was it when he came into the UFC or was it even before that? Well, now that, uh, that the fight is over, because there was a lot of he say, she say, what happened in 2008? He came to the gym and my coach, Ricardo Laborio, told me, man, this guy's a good wrestler. Don't, don't take him lightly, you know? I kid you not. As soon as we started, I picked him up, slammed him. We scrambled back to a neutral because he could scramble his ass off. We kept going. He couldn't score a takedown. I took him down again, but this is what MMA gloves, not throwing hard, you know, just like you're measuring. I took him down again to which he had scrambled me and stayed on top of me for like a minute and a half. Didn't submit me, wasn't my guard, but didn't pass my guard. So when he was putting these comments out there, I was like, man, this guy's a fucking idiot, bro. He has to lie to himself to get himself motivated you just gave yourself away. You're a bitch, you know? If you got to be lying about shit like that, you're a bitch. But I'm at American Top Team where dozens of champions come in there throughout the weeks. You don't think I've, I have stories to tell of guys that I've decapitated or, or put down with a body shot or whatnot? But I don't do that because I'm a man. And we got a code in the gym. This is what we work and We sharpen our tools and then we display them to the world. He doesn't have those ethics and guidelines. So... Just just from that alone, I was already like, man, he's a weirdo. And, and then on top, after the wrestling practice, he came by and tried to do some corny-ass joke. And it was like me, maybe Jay-Z, Cavalcante at the time, somebody else. We just looked at him like, man, you, you could just introduce yourself. You don't got to be a fucking idiot, you know? And just, since that moment, I never liked him. And lastly for me, uh, do you, you know, you have over 50 fights, as you mentioned. Do you think that you're better suited to be a champion now than you would have been when you're young because you're more mature, you've had more experience in the fight game, and you know better what it takes than maybe you did five, eight years ago when you were maybe more physically talented but not as uh, experienced? Uh, no, I'm probably more physically talented right now, man, to tell you the truth. Really? Uh, in what way? In many ways, man. I'm for, I, some of them I can't talk about them on air. But I'm fucking talented as fuck, man, physically and mentally. Poirier straight ahead. Um, Dustin Poirier tweeted uh, after your knockout that at dinner last night, uh, Mike Brown and you had talked to him about this being the game plan with the knee and that Mike Brown had even shown him video yeah. of you guys practicing that. So now that the fights happen, can you kind of tell the story of that and, you know, leading up to it, how long you guys had been contemplating this? Well, it was in the back of my pocket, like, pull it out whenever you want, George. Mike Brown is, like, very, especially with me, he kind of just lays out the game plan and do it what you want, you know. We didn't know if I was going to open up with it right right away, but we knew I was going to have it in my back pocket for sure, you know. And I, and I did want to hit him with it in the first round. I didn't know if right off the rip or a minute or two into it because mainly whether I hit him or miss, it kind of pumps the brakes on wrestlers like, whoa, if, if I shoot in, I could get my face rearranged and, and look like an idiot on TV. So I definitely want to put that out in the first round. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do it right off rip, but he fell for the bait so hard. I could just see how eager he was just to come forward. And so I put my hands behind my back and let him think, come, come eat. He didn't know it was going to be a buffet, though. He thought it was going to be a three-piece. Now you're getting the whole fucking MGM Grand Buffet to the face, man. And uh, even if the knee had not landed perfectly, was the idea that that would probably mentally alter his game plan as far as the wrestling focus moving forward, that it would be easier to dictate the pace of the rest of the fight? Well, three, three things, three outcomes I, I thought from the knee. The first one, 
the second one would have been I miss, and the third one would have been I miss, and he grabs my leg and he takes me down, and we scramble right away, and he finds out I can't hold this guy down. And I was cool with all three of those scenarios and outcomes. I don't think there's a fourth one, unless somebody could think of one. But those were the outcomes in my head, so I was like, man, these knees are just free from me. I'm not fighting a guy that, that intends to punch me in the face whatsoever. He's not a mean guy. He doesn't want to punch me in the face. He wants to hug my leg and put his face in my crotch. There's nothing. I can throw all the knees I want. I have nothing to worry about. Hey, Jorge, aquí, a tu izquierda. Hey, ¿cómo está? Muy bien. Eh, en primer lugar, felicitaciones por lo que has hecho. Hace un par de días te preguntaba eh, que cómo estaba, me decías que muy bien. Y además me decía que estaba muy contento porque decía que le iba a partir la cara a un payaso y que encima te sí, iban a pagar por ello, así lo dijiste. Sí, señor. Además, sí, estoy encantado de hablar en español porque de momento no, no hubo nadie que te eh, hiciera hablar en tu lengua madre. Y, ya tú sabes. Oye, ya tú sabes, brother. Eh, ¿Te imaginabas esto en el mejor de tus sueños? No en el mejor de mis sueños. En el mejor de mis sueños... Eh, yo lo iba a castigar por 14 minutos y enseñarle a él que es un hombre de verdad y mi papá está ahí y él es testigo mi papá fue el que me dijo no quiero que hagas eso yo quiero que acabes con el rápido para que le enseñes al mundo que tú mejor eres que él pero yo en realidad lo quería castigar por 14 minutos mi papá es el testigo mío ese era en mi mejor sueño que yo lo castigara en 14 minutos y después lo ponía a dormir ¿qué es lo siguiente para ti? What is the next for you? el título el título el título y hamburguesas <risa> hamburguesa vale. gracias Jorge, over here. Yes, uh, before the fight, did you sense any kind of fear in him? Because I know this yeah. is like... Yeah. Talk about that. Man, I had that dude spooked out. It was funny to me that he kept saying he's under my skin because I didn't go to a press conference. He was bragging about that I didn't go to a press conference. Let me tell you guys a secret. I could care less to be here, man. If I could be right now in and out burger and some cheeseburgers and I wouldn't get fined for missing this thing, I'd be gone. No disrespect because there's a lot of cool motherfuckers in here, bro. <laughs> But I, I don't care, especially to fly across the country. I had a little bit of food poisoning, and I had staff. The first one that was in Atlanta, I don't know if y'all could see this. I had a good case of staff, and I just said, I'm not going to go nowhere like this, you know. So he was bragging about that. I was like, man, I'm going to catch this dude. I seen him one day in the hallways. We were taking pictures, and I just jumped up on him. And right away, I could see how nervous he was. He's a deer in lights, stiff meister, you know? Similar how he ended up tonight, stiff as a fucking board. It's the same way he was every time I seen him, man. So I got no respect for him, because if you could talk that shit like this, you got to be able to do it in the FaceTime. If not, shut the fuck up, man, because we don't even know if it's you the one typing, man. It's just fucking, he just throws shit on the wall and hopes that it sticks, you know? It's obvious that you guys don't really love each other, but... Is there a chance that maybe one day you guys could drop the beef, or do you think it's is, is this a permanent thing? Oh no, it, it's not beef. Because if it was beef, it'd be different. I'd be at the front of his house waiting for him right now. It's not beef. This is just I don't like some my coworker. We could say, but this is not beef. You know, this okay. is just some idiot I don't like. You know, but my job, thank God, I'm. You guys got to be jealous of, of this for me. I get to punch the coworkers I don't like in the face. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man. You got it. Hey, George, right over here to your left. What's up, man? Uh, Algerman Santos, Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of slow motion camera that can capture that, those, if they could, capture those five seconds. Where in those five seconds did you know that you had it in the bag? Blah! As <laughs> soon as that dude signed the contract, man. <laughs> as soon as I, he was acting like he wanted to come forward and I put my hands behind my back and like signal to him and he was like yeah for sure I'm putting my face in your crotch I was like oh I got you bro for sure I got you bro you're such a fucking fish man appreciate it thank you you got it Jorge right here uh, what did Dana say to you in the octagon after the finish be nice to him <laughs> that's what I remember I don't know I'm sure he said a couple other things you know but he was just like be, be nice to Ben be, be nice to him now you know because I, I was telling him why'd you put me to fight with this guy because I I believe, and a lot of the media also believed it, not a lot, but some of the media, that this was a step back for me. I've been fighting fucking, I, I fought Eve Edwards over 10 years ago, but that guy's a fucking fighter. That guy's a stud, bro. You guys might not know who Eve Edwards is. If you don't, shame on you. Go do some research. I've been fighting badasses for a long time. To get put in with this guy was, was a setback in a way, you know. I'm glad, though. I'm going to steal that fucking hype and go fight for my title now because they were saying this is the greatest grappler ever. I think Joe Rogan said it's like grappling two guys. All the media was behind this guy. He's, what, uh, fucking 38-0 or whatever the fucking bullshit record he has. 
you know so he's obviously something in in the grappling community but to me as far as fighting goes he doesn't rank in my top 10 victories and then at media day i brought up the fact that dana said he wanted to build a pi in puerto rico and you said i'm gone yeah and you said i'm gone i'm gone puerto rico here i go did you talk to dana about that you said you wanted to meet nah dana dana ain't talked to me about that he might be a little mad i did his boy ben like that man i know those two are real close what what happens what happens if colby wins next month how do you determine who who gets the title shot? What how do, how do you figure that out? I don't know who who if that's Dana, if that's Hunter, if that's Sean Shelby. I I don't know of them who does it, but I think my body of work speaks for itself. If you want sheer violence, you know who to call. If you want other shit, man, fucking guys going to press conferences on time and posting on their shit, then you know who to call, man. But if you want somebody's gonna give you this fucking violence, you know who to call.